All right, feeding the starter. So we are gonna roll with 96 grams of just regular all-purpose flour. All right, hit the Altair button. We're gonna take it to 118, 120. Grams of water. All right, 120. All right, we're going to take this off. Stir it up. All right, once it's mixed up really, really well, scrape down the sides, cover the top. You let that sit overnight and you feed it like that three nights in a row and you're ready to go. All right, it's been a couple of days. The night before I'm gonna bake, I double feed the starter. You look inside, you can see it's super bubbly. And so what I do is I actually pour off that top part. Cause it's kind of foamy and not everything that we're after here. All right, and I come back over and I've got my big bowl and it's 160 grams of starter per loaf and I'm actually making three loaves today. So let's take that. So you want it to be generally smooth. All right, next up we add the water. So we've got our three batches worth of starter in here. And I've got water and I took its temperature. I like it about 115 degrees. All right, and now for three batches, we need 943 grams. Normally you would need, I think it's 314. All right, we got all the water in there that we need. And now you're gonna stir this into a slurry. Right, so we're basically dissolving the uh, starter in the hot water. In many ways, supercharging the yeast. And this is ready to be active and hungry and dive in on uh, the flour we're going to be adding next. All right, next up into our slurry, we've got our flour. It's normally 510, but again, I'm making a triple batch. So I'm looking for 1,530 grams. Now we got the loose slurry in this and we just kind of just try and bring it together with a spoon, right? We're trying to make a loose dough. Right now it's just flour on top of the slurry. So we're gonna mix this up and I'll be right back. Okay. So I stirred it up, this was just with a spoon, and um, it's kind of raggedy. And so now we're gonna take it, and we're gonna use our hand, and we're gonna hand knead this for 10 minutes until it forms a dough ball. So you can see I'm kind of turning the bowl and then folding it over towards myself. And you can kind of do this any way you want, but I kind of look at it as taking a quarter of the dough I'm folding it over itself and just doing that over and over so everything gets incorporated and hydrated. So we'll be back. So we're about halfway through. It's been five minutes. You can see it's kind of coming together. It's a dough. It's still sticky, which is okay. But uh, I just wanted to kind of show my technique. So I like to scoop, rotate, and kind of plop it over the top. Let's see if I can get this. Whoop. Nope. Back. So I hold the bowl, lift up, rotate the bowl flop it over and I'm just doing that. And then every once in a while, I'll take this and scrape the sides. It's a soft bench scraper. Scrape the sides, get it all back together. Okay, back and forth. All right, it's been 10 minutes of kneading. You can see it's tightened up a little bit, still a little bit tacky, but that's okay. We're gonna um, take it 
We're gonna put a towel over the top, a warm towel with like hot water. We're gonna cover this bad boy up for 20 minutes, all right? And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put salt on it and knead it again, BRB. All right, it's been 20 minutes. We're gonna take this off. As you can see, not much has changed. Not much has changed. Um, you wanna add 12 grams of salt. Now, I'm doing three batches, so I've got 36 grams. And you kind of add it half at a time. Now, historically, I've used pink salt, Hawaiian salt, not just because, not really for flavor, but because um, you can see it a little more easily. Got a little bowl of uh, hot water here, and you're gonna wanna drip that water on the salt. You're kind of like par dissolving it, so that way it integrates a little more easily. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get a damp. Dough should be stretchy, less sticky now. And you're gonna, you're gonna um, knead it just like you did before for about two or three minutes. Add the rest of the salt, sprinkle some water on it, and then stir it again, mix it again uh, until um, you can feel all that salt integrated. You're not feeling grains on your fingers. All right, away we go. All right, it's all mixed in. All the salt is integrated. A um, little tacky, but it's not really sticking to my finger. Um, we're gonna cover this up and we're gonna begin the stretch and fold phase. What that means is we're gonna cover it up. It's gonna sit for four hours. And then every 45 minutes, we're gonna come out and stretch it and fold it. And I'll show that when the time comes. Um, again, every 45 minutes. Now, in the summertime, 45 or four hours works. In the, in the winter, like it is now, if your house is cold, you might want to go five hours just so you get a good rise because this is where it's rising. This is where you're kind of doing some of the final gluten. So every time you stretch and fold, you're going to want to bust this out. You're going to want to scrape down the sides, keep it all tight, keep it all together. But we're going to cover this up and I'll see you back soon. All right, we're back. It's been 45 minutes. We'll take the top off. Might look a little bit bigger after 45 minutes, but maybe not too much. And so, again, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Kind of scoop and fold it over. Scoop, fold it over, fold it over, fold it over. One last side that hasn't been stretched, folded. We'll take our scraper and just scrape all of the remaining dough that kind of stuck to the sides, get it back on that dough ball. And that's it. I'm gonna put the top back on, 45 more minutes. I'm just gonna assume you're gonna get that figured out. We'll come back when we're actually uh, done stretching and folding. See you then. All right, a little over four and a half hours later, maybe you can see how much this has risen, almost doubled in size. And you might see um, little bubbles, right? little hollow areas where bubbles are coming up. Very active, very alive. So next up, uh, we're gonna portion it up. And when I say portion, um, I mean literally measure. So I've got three batches here and we're gonna split this into thirds. It's about 950 to 1,000 grams per loaf. So we're gonna chunk them up and then put them on this table and then we will be back. All right, so we've got our three roughly equally portioned loaves and now we're going to shape them into rounds. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, and I'll do it, we're gonna grab from one side and pull over, grab from one side and pull over and we're gonna be stretching it onto itself. And what we're doing is we're creating the film that will become the crust. So grab it, pull, Opposite side, grab it, pull. And then opposite side again. I've lightly dusted this with flour so it doesn't, doesn't stick too bad. But as I'm pulling, that top part is getting tighter. And because I'm pulling in opposite directions, the, uh, the ball is getting rounder. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the, on the table here and kind of pull it towards us, right? And it's tightening that skin up on the outside so you get a nice crust. 
There you go. And now we're gonna do this to all of them. Maybe I'll fast forward and maybe I won't. You want that outside to be to be tight. It should almost feel like a little tension under it. Uh, something else. When uh, when you're cutting up the dough in the earlier phase, you don't want to squeeze it and crunch it too much. So what I usually do is you pick it up, and it could do this with any size chunk, and you take your hand and you make a little circle, and you pinch it, right? That way you're not losing the bubbles that you spent the last five hours building. So let's do this last one. All right, now that same towel that you've been um, using to keep them moist in the bowl, you're gonna drop these in here, 20 minutes, you're gonna let them bench proof. Okay, now we're gonna line our banneton baskets with some flour and some cornstarch. So let me get a little bowl. Now we're gonna go about 50-50 flour to cornstarch. Don't need exact measurements here because you're just using what they'll take. We're not uh, like filling them up. Probably plenty more than enough. More than enough. All right, give them a little whisk. Okay, so then I'll bring one of our uh, baskets over and I'll dump in a bunch of it. Okay, and we're going to take it. And you're gonna take like a little handful and you're gonna like rub it into the seams. See that? Right into the seams. And we're gonna go all the way around. You see how they're filling those gaps? It's gonna do two things. Still get a little bit of let a little bit of air pass through there as it proofs, but it's also going to help it release from the basket, from the proofing basket, and most importantly, I'll give it some very cool lines when it comes out. It looks super professional. Okay, so now I've got these, you know, mostly filled in. I'm just going to grab the next one. Scrape out the remnants. Now you don't want to tap it or any of that stuff, so then it'll just all come out. Okay? Let's get all the excess, put it in the next one. And we're going to do that two more times. And I'll see you then. All right, 20 minutes has elapsed. And so now we're going to reveal one of the loaves. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to turn it over. We're going to stitch it. And then we're going to drop it into one of these uh, Banneton baskets. So, um, yeah, let's, let's get to it. I'll use my handy flexible bench scraper to make sure things aren't too stuck and you want to keep that upside up and that downside down. I kind of underflowered this surface a little bit, but it'll be okay. Pull it down, pull it over, pull it over, pull it over. See how it's elongated and now you're going to roll it. So we're just tightening that up again, rolling that up nice and tight. And then we're going to roll that and put that seam side up in the basket, okay? And we're gonna do that two more times. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of flour here. That was a little too sticky. 
got to do this again. A little bit of flour to help us, okay? Pull it down, and then we're going to pull one over, and pull one over, and pull one over, and then we're going to roll it up. Roll, roll, roll. Bust some of those bubbles. Roll, 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 roll. Okay? See that? And now seam side up. Right there. And we're going to do the same thing here. Okay, reach our fingers underneath. Down. Grab one. Pull it over almost in half. And then one, two, three, four. Your number may vary. And then we roll it up. Roll it up. All right, take that seam side up, drop it in there. Now, slide all this floury mess out of the way. Got these bags. Bags are dual purpose. For one, they um, help the area, the the bread stay moist when it's in there. So we're gonna take it and we're just gonna slide it all the way in there. Okay, and then when you put it in your fridge, you fold this underneath. And you lay it down. So it's going to sit in the fridge. This is going to keep it moist. It'll keep any flavors out of there. And it'll give it a, a good environment for a cold rise. Now, a cold rise is cool um, uh -huh, because it, um, it slows down the yeast. It makes them rise a little more slowly. And what that does is it provides a little bit more of that yeasty kind of sour flavor that you're looking for in sourdough. So we're gonna take these just like this. I'm gonna drop them in the fridge and they're gonna be in there for eh, maybe not 24 hours. They're gonna be in there for a good 15 hours and they'll puff up, maybe pick up 30, 40%, maybe even 50% more, um, more volume. And then we're going to cook them, and we'll get to that tomorrow. All right. All right, here we are for baking day. Got that out of the fridge right before. Got the oven. We set it to 500 degrees. We've got a stone in there, and we've got a pan of water kind of simmering away. Okay, so you've got your bag. Take it out of the fridge. We're going to remove it. Carefully, it's going to stick. Pull it out, and then just turn it over. There it is. Make our cuts, and you can do this however you want. Um, I like to make four or five cuts on one side, and I tend to make them shallow. And then I come back and make them super deep. Turn it around, same thing on the other side. Now, when you're cutting, this is the direction that the loaf will expand. So if you cut it down the middle, it's gonna expand out. You cut it from the sides, it's gonna get like slightly longer. And so you can determine which way your bread kind of rises based on the cut, okay? And I'm gonna take this, Maybe I'll bring you along with me. Okay, get that open. In there. All right, now you drop the temp. 20 minutes. And then we're gonna let that go for 20 minutes, drop the temp again to 450, 20 minutes, and then we'll be back. All right, and that's it. You take it out of the oven, um, take the parchment paper off, and you put it on the baking rack, and you let it sit for as long as you can stand. Realistically, you probably want this thing to sit for um, like three hours, four hours before you bag it up. Any sort of steam inside of a bag that you put it in will ruin your crunchy crust. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.